let's look at a problem um, very much like some of the later problems in section 4.6 where you look at a whole family of functions and um, in this case it's going to be x cubed plus cx squared where c is going to be various different values and the goal is to qualitatively investigate what can happen with these functions and qualitatively what will they look like as c changes and how will they change as c changes so one perfectly decent approach to this is do a bunch of examples on the calculator to start with and um, try to get a sense of what's out there but you're you're likely to miss something there and it's hard to get an organized sense of what's going on um, so it, let's assume you've already done that and you want to get a better understanding using calculus so if that's f of x then let's look at the derivatives because that's going to tell us things like does it have a hump or a pit or not or how many or where are they um, and with the second derivative is going to be interesting in terms of inflection points if somebody if you look at a curve one of the first things you're going to notice about it is even if you don't know calculus you're going to notice maxima and minima and inflection points and things like that even if you don't have names for that and so those are going to be interesting things to determine um, and see where those show up um, if at all okay so there's going to be that's f prime and let's go ahead and get f double prime as well I still have my cold so I apologize for the sniffling okay so obviously one interesting thing to do is simply set this equal to zero and look for whether and where the solutions whether they have solutions and where the solutions would be so let's go back to f prime 3x squared plus 2cx let's set it equal to zero and so you can factor out an x there 3x plus 2c equals zero and so what that's telling us is that um, there will always be at least one zero for f prime i.e. at least one critical point and we're not sure if it's a max, a min, or what, but there's at least one critical point at x equals zero, and you know if you plug that into here, you get y equals zero. So it's going to be at the origin. There's always at least one critical point at the origin. Good to know. Okay, and then there will be another critical point at the solution to three x plus two c equals zero, and that, so that's going to be x equals minus two c over three. So that's very interesting. So the critical point for C positive, it's going to be the critical point's going to be um, in on the left hand side of the number line. And when C is negative, it's going to be on the right hand side. And we could even um, we could even plug that into here and get a formula for um, how high that thing is. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. It's kind of interesting. It's a little simpler than you might expect. Y is going to be minus 2c over 3 cubed plus c times minus 2c over 3 squared you know what I'm just gonna put this in display mode and separate these out on different lines so I can do this there we go and so that's gonna be these this gives a c cubed this gives a c cubed as well times minus 8 third minus eight twenty seventh sorry plus four ninths and I'm gonna promote that to be twenty seventh twelve twenty seventh that's four ninths but tw or twelve twenty seventh and so it's gonna be four twenty seventh c cubed so that's really interesting um, that all these different critical points of these different functions lie on a fairly simple curve where x is given by minus two c over three and y is given by four over 27 c cubed, and I'll plot that um, in a little bit when we uh, when we actually go to use it, letting the calculator show this uh, for us. So um, we know that it's got this one fixed critical point and a moving critical point, depending on what the c value is, and it moves um, as c goes from negative to positive. This guy goes from the right hand side to the left hand side of the number line, and correspondingly, the y values change as well. What about inflection points? Well, remember f double prime of x was equal to uh, 6x plus 2c. 
So let's set that equal to 0. And x is going to be minus c over 3. OK, that's actually very nice. That's halfway in between the fixed uh, critical point at 0 and the moving critical point at minus 2 c over 3. And that's actually a, f a feature of all cubics, is that the one inflection point uh, is always halfway in between the two, um, the two critical points. So that's going to move in sync with this information. So for example, if, they, if uh, somebody asked you, when does this function have a critical point in the right-hand side of the number line? You can say that's going to be for all c's, c is um, less than 0, so th this will be positive. And uh, when, when does it have an inflection point in that right-hand side? Same, same answer was when c is negative. So think about it for a second and try to picture what, we, what we're going to have here. We're going to have almost, every, almost all of these guys are going to have um, uh, these two critical points, one at the origin and one at these various different locations, and then an inflection point between them. And it's going to be the standard picture for a cubic, kind of an S-curve. And then if we can try to picture those S curves changing as C changes so that the, um, the critical points, that one critical point moves, we can get start to get a picture of what's going to happen with this thing. So let's go ahead and confirm what we've done by looking at a animated graph. So here is the situation where C is negative. I think I'm starting at C is negative. 3, yeah. So when c is negative 3, the, we've got um, a critical point here at the origin, and we've got a critical point here at a negative at 2, which is negative 2 thirds times 3. And let me go ahead and animate that thing. And so what we expect to see is a fixed critical point and a moving critical point, and then an inflection point between them. And indeed, there's that thing moving. And now notice the um, the critical point is moving in. So right in the middle, we get a very special situation, just right about here, which is just x cubed. When c equals 0, there's just the one inflection point, and there's not two critical points. We knew that was going to happen. And then what happens? That critical point reappears on the left-hand side. We knew that had to happen. And now, what we hadn't yet analyzed, um, I hadn't bothered to analyze, is what types of point critical points those were. How, could we have predicted? that at the start of the journey, the one at the origin was a, mi a maximum, and this, uh, this moving one was a minimum, and then they switched their roles halfway in between. Well, we totally could predict that. And if somebody had asked us specifically about that, we could have answered that without the computer. Let's look at see how, see how that would work real quick. We could look at the critical points. Here's this critical point. And then we can use either the first or the second derivative test. The second derivative test is probably a little easier because it's we just all we have to do is plug this thing into the second derivative. So let's look at that. The second derivative test, we're going to apply that to both critical points. F double prime of 0, the non-moving critical point, is just 0 plus 2c. If c is positive, that's positive. That's a minimum. If c is negative, that's negative. That's a, that's a that's a maximum, and that's what we saw in the animation. Remember that was going from starting c negative to to ending positive. That, that's the end of the movie. Let's go back to the movie. So that confirms that yes, it starts out being a maximum. The non-moving critical point starts out that's this negative second derivative, and then as c changes to positive, that second derivative becomes positive, and it becomes a local minimum. And we can also check the. Um, the, the moving critical point by plugging in f double prime of minus 2c over 3 is, we just plug minus 2c over 3 into here, uh, plus 2c. And that's equal to, let's see, minus 2 thirds times 6 is minus 4c plus 2c, and that's minus 2c. And so now, it tells us that the second derivatives are equal and opposite. That's a, and yet another fact that's always true about cubics, actually, that the second derivatives at the, the hump and the pit are equal and opposite. 
and it tells us that uh, for when c is negative, this starts out with this positive second derivative. That's a min. And when c switches to, to positive, this becomes negative. And that's exactly what we were seeing with our movie. OK, that's a good place to stop.